The red hydrogen one is not really a smartphone, it's a camera that also happens to be a smartphone. This makes sense to me intuitively, because when I use smartphones for video projects, or to take photos on vacation, I use a separate phone as the camera. That's exactly what I did with a Galaxy S9 when I was testing the moment lens anamorphic on a trip to Yosemite. If you conceptualize the hydrogen as a phone that competes with Samsung, Apple, or Huawei, it just flatly doesn't make sense. But ask yourself this, if you were designing a pocket camera today, would you use the slow embedded chips that Sony, Canon, and Nikon use in their compact cameras? Or would you use a speedy Snapdragon chip, like the one Google is using in the Pixel 2 to deliver its category-leading computational photography? Red's Hydrogen 1 is an Android phone all about 3D. There are 3D cameras on the front and back, and you can watch 3D movies on what the company calls a 4V display. It comes with a Snapdragon 835, 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, which puts it on par with most flagship phones, that came out in 2017. The Hydrogen is novel, but at $1,295, it's not a device that lives up to its price. The Hydrogen Phone When I spoke to Jim Jannard, the founder of RED, he told me that this really isn't a cell phone, it's a media machine that happens to have a cell phone included in that. Everything was done thinking about this as an image capture machine. So, considering that, we're going to focus primarily on the camera in this review. We'll definitely talk about the phone side of things as well, but given the company's stated priorities, that will come second. But before we go on, there's one thing to keep in mind throughout, the hydrogen costs $1,295. As of this writing, the Galaxy S9 costs $669 at Best Buy. Just for context. The Hydrogen Camera System The Hydrogen standout feature is 3D photo and video capture, which the company calls 4V or 4View. There are four cameras on the device arranged in two stereo pairs on the front and back. These two pairs are oriented differently, though, meaning that you can only capture 4V pictures and video horizontally with the rear camera system and vertically in the front. It's a little weird in practice, but it does make sense. Before we get into the 4V aspects of the camera system, though, I think it's important to evaluate the camera system in 2D, for a couple of reasons. First, like any system, the quality of what you put in will influence what you get out. So if the 2D images and videos are great, it's likely that the 4V results will also be great. But if they are bad, the results will also be bad, but in 3D. The second reason is simple, everyone else has a 2D screen. So even if you capture a red 3D picture, everyone that you share it with will only be able to enjoy it in 2D. And if the hydrogen is a camera at first and a smartphone second, it should be able to deliver class-leading 2D images right for Instagram. Capital X. So without further ado, let's break down this camera system. Around back you've got two 12.3 megapixel sensors. Two things matter when it comes comes to light gathering ability, pixel and aperture size. The Hydrogen's cameras have 1.55 pixels, which is 0.15 larger than which you'll find on the Galaxy S9 or the Pixel 2 at 1.40m. However, the aperture, which is the size of hole that lets light in, is f1.8, which lets in less light than the f1.5 aperture you'll find on the S9. Yes, f1.8 is smaller than f1.5. I don't make the rules. Anyway, the point is that there is nothing particularly special about these sensors. They don't gather radically more light than other smartphones, they aren't ridiculously large like the 40MP monster on the P20 Pro or Mate 20 Pro, they're just normal cameras with sensors that I can only assume are from 2017, given the how late the device is. The Hydrogen's cameras also lack optical image stabilization, or OIS, which is a big deal. Both the iPhone XS and the Galaxy Note 9 have dual camera systems where both lenses are stabilized, so it's certainly not impossible. What this means is that videos will be shakier and photos a bit blurrier in challenging lighting conditions, 